the 19th chapter of the book of Job. Then Job answered, How long will you torment me and break me in pieces with words? These ten times you have cast reproach upon me. Are you not ashamed to wrong me? And even if it is true that I have erred, my error remains with me. If indeed you magnify yourselves against me and make my humiliation an argument against me. Know then that God has put me in the wrong and closed his net around me. Even when I cry out violence, I am not answered. I call aloud, but there is no justice. He has walled up my way so that I cannot pass, and he has set darkness upon my paths. He has stripped my glory from me and taken the crown from my head. He breaks me down on every side and I am gone. He has uprooted my hope like a tree. He has kindled his wrath against me and counts me as his adversary. His troops come on together. They have thrown up sledge works against me and encamp around my tent. He has put my family far from me and my acquaintances are wholly estranged from me. My relatives and my close friends have failed me. The guests in my house have forgotten me. My serving girls count me as a stranger. I have become an alien in their eyes. I call to my servants, but he gives me no answer. I must myself plead with him. My breath is repulsive to my wife. I am loathsome to my own family. Even young children despise me. When I rise, they talk against me. And my intimate friends abhor me, and those whom I have loved have turned against me. My bones cling to my skin and to my flesh, and I have escaped by the skin of my teeth. Have pity on me. Have pity on me, O oh, you, my friends, for the hand of God has touched me. Why do you, like God, pursue me, never satisfied with my flesh? Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. If you say, how we will persecute him, and the root of the matter is found in him, be afraid of the sword, for wrath brings the punishment of the sword, so that you may know there is judgment. Job is a book of mysterious origins and unknown authorship, speaking to us across the best part of three millennia. What makes it distinctive within the biblical canon is its brutal honesty. The way the writer is prepared in the words of John Ruskin to gaze without shrinking into the darkness and to sustain that gaze for 40 long chapters. Chapter 19 is Job's response to one of his comforters, Bildad, who has been offering him a theodicy to help him to make sense of his sufferings. It goes like this. God is good. The universe is rational and coherent. So suffering and adversity must have a reason. The most likely reason 
is that we, or in this case you, have done something wrong. Perhaps we are seeing the natural consequences of our actions. Perhaps God is intentionally punishing us. Either way, if we can find the reason and change our behaviour accordingly, there's a good chance that things will get better. It's a well-meant attempt to offer hope, but it's shrinking from the darkness. Job simply won't have this. Unencumbered by Christian fastidiousness at attributing evil to God, he tells the truth about his own experience. He is an innocent man, or at least no worse than anybody else. God is not his judge, but his enemy, and more than his enemy, his torturer. Everywhere Job turns, evidence of God's enmity confronts him, impeding his attempts to cope, tormenting him, breaking him, crushing him. William Blake's illustration of this passage really captures this sense of unremitting oppression by God, drawing on Job's earlier lament from chapter 7. When I say, my bed will comfort me, my couch will ease my complaint, then you scare me with dreams and terrify me with visions. And just as this inescapable oppression keeps so close, all normal comforts, connection with loved ones, a place of belonging and respect in the community are cut off. Social distancing, isolation, othering, loneliness, abandonment, even when I cry out violence, I am not answered. But then comes something redolent of Isaiah 53. Out of his anguish he shall see light. A more profound insight into what C.S. Lewis describes as a deeper magic. This ancient voice utters the most astonishing words of conviction. Strong as iron unyielding as stone, a prophetic vision of his unassailable human dignity and righteousness, because in the end, someone, a kinsman who redeems, will stand in solidarity with him in his place of suffering. Not only that, this kinsman, perhaps we might call him the son of man, allows Job to see God as God is, not as he had thought, as his inscrutable enemy, but, and here is perhaps the most astonishing claim, as no stranger. This is what the words and not other seem to mean. And this is how the phrase is rendered in some English translations. God the one described by Rudolf Otto as the Holy Other, the one who created the cosmos in all its majesty and wonder, will come close as not other, to be known, seen, touched and tasted in the flesh here and now. Buried deep in the midst of deep darkness from the far distant past, we find a promise of vindication and intimacy with our Creator in the midst of our physical and psychological sufferings. Not that worms will not destroy our bodies, but that even as they do, we can encounter the divine close up, discover that we are loved. No more referring to that one as God but instead crying Abba. Let us pray that God will vindicate those who feel judged, isolated and wearied, that they may see his heart of compassion and love. Blessed are you, 
Lord God of our salvation. Be with those like Job this night who cry out for your justice and healing from the depths of physical, spiritual, psychological and emotional suffering. Comfort and support those who feel far from family and friends and human touch, who fear they are forgotten and alone. As your Son, Jesus Christ, bore the weight of our sin on the tree of life and ever lives as our Redeemer and Saviour, may the whole world see your divine love in his face of suffering and glory. Amen.
At Southall Minster, we watch and wait and pray. Abba, Father, we have heard your whisper in the face of Job's honesty. As we wait for the dawn to break, kindle in us the flame of your presence and breathe on the embers of our hope that we may dare to whisper hushed rumours of resurrection until morning comes. Amen. <laughs>